Have you ever ended up down an internet rabbit hole? Well, I did. And it's that rabbit hole that has got me out and about here in Fort Erie. And how did this all come about, I hear you say? Well, I was browsing the internet like you do, and I was looking around a thing called Abandoned Ontario, looking for ideas of videos to go and do. And one of the uh, pages mentioned a cemetery, a cemetery uh, with a very unusual name. And that name stood out like a sore thumb. It really did. And it's here in the Fort Erie area. I then searched the name of the uh, cemetery and ended up on torontoghost.org, a website. From there that I then ended up bouncing myself around from website to website, YouTube and so on. And through dozens of internet uh, sites, uh, to trying to find more information on this particular cemetery, I ended up uh, finding myself on a histor historical tour of Fort Erie, a fascinating one. Having come in from a country that is enriched in history, uh, covering hundreds if not thousands of years, it's sometimes very hard to find the history within Canada itself, being such a huge country, and also the fact that it's not that old. Uh, most of the history only spans back a couple hundred years, uh, like what I'm going to be looking at today is probably less than 200 years old, but it's still absolutely fascinating. Fort Erie is historically known for its part of the War of 1812. Fort Erie was the site of the bloodiest battles during the War of 1812 itself, and it was occupied twice by the Americans. It still stands today and is now listed as a National Historic Site of Canada. The Battle of Ridgeway was fought in the vicinity of the town of Fort Erie near the village of Ridgeway. On June 2nd, 1866, between the Canadian troops and an irregular army of Irish-American invaders, the Fenians another part of the Fort Erie history. And I also stumbled across a few images of a train coming through Ridgeway. One very old one and one not so old. Between 1830 and 1880, the area from here which was once Miller's Bay's shipyard, now the Niagara Parks Commission Marina at the Niagara River, stretching west to Stevensville and ending at the uh, Ridgemount Road, became known as Little Africa. Now, this particular area was a, a popular settlement for um, escaping refugees from the United States who crossed over the river uh, on, the, on the Underground Railroad and made their way over here. It's this little area now known as Little Africa. And uh, back in 1840, the population of the black people in our community was about 80 people. And by 1880, uh, that had gone to over 200 people. But in the late 1880s, uh, a lot of those people in this community uh, dispersed and went moving elsewhere uh, throughout the province of Ontario and also uh, the land of Canada itself. At the end of 1851 a census was conducted and it actually showed how many uh, people of colour were living in our area of Fort Erie and uh, that census was then conducted again in 1861 and they even uh, specified in that census uh, what type of person they were, whether they were coloured, uh, whether they were uh, mulatto or even Indian. All right, sadly like most history in Canada it uh, just gets torn down and there's nothing left except for a, a plaque in the ground or a monument of stone uh, by the side of the road. And that is really it. That is a sad fact that history took place here uh, 150, 160 years ago. And right now, where I'm standing, there's nothing to, to be seen except for that plaque, which was only made a few years ago. But there is one particular place where there is remnants of the history which can be actually seen. Stuff that dates back to that era of the uh, mid 1800s or late 1800s. And that's where we're gonna go next. This is what got me intrigued with doing this little story. And that is the Coloured Cemetery. And pardon the name, uh, I'll explain a bit more about that later because it is a name that has been kept and rightly so. All right, we're just going to put the address of 2300 Curtis Road in to give you an idea where it is. That is an address pretty close to the cemetery. Google Earth will just take us right there, and there you have it. And it's located Curtis Road, just off Ridgemount Road, and just around the corner uh, from where we're actually going to be is the St. John's Anglican Church and the St. John's Cemetery. 
And if I just zoom out, I'll give you a bit of perspective more where we are. Uh, south is directly to the top and Fort Erie to the left. This is the Coloured Cemetery. It's also known by a couple of other names: uh, the Rose Cemetery, the Dina uh, Howa, the, sorry, the Dina Howa Cemetery, uh, Curtis Road Cemetery, and the Little Cemetery around the corner. Because there's so many sunken uh, graves uh, with no markers and a lack of records, it's really hard to tell precisely who is actually really buried here. There is a few uh, names listed. Uh, on record and there's also a few tombstones you can just about read uh, but a lot of people apparently have been buried here and there's no record of them. In the 1861 census there are only two tombstones that identify the deceased as being coloured. Uh, Russell family and the Bright family. I'm going to try and locate them as we walk through the uh, the cemetery very very shortly. This is amazing history here in Fort Erie. It's of a time of the mid, mid to late 1800s. They've kept the name. It's documented that this name was used even though back in 1986-87 there was a local guy who raised a question regarding the name of the cemetery and whether it, it was right to be named that in this day and age but no. The, uh, the board, the cemetery board looked into this and they concurred, no, we're going to keep the name on record. That is exactly what it was called back in the day. And those are the words people were using back in that day as well. We shouldn't be editing our history to suit individuals. We have to preserve the history as it is, regardless of the terminology that they use. And we have to learn from that. And that is the whole point of history. We learn from it. We have to preserve it and learn it. And I'm so happy this little piece of history here in Fort Erie is being preserved the way it is. Right, what I'm going to try and do right now is try and locate uh, the gravestones of uh, the two people, the two names I mentioned, uh, the Russell uh, gravestone and the Bright one. So they're very hard to read. Now, I think I saw the Russell one just over here when I actually first arrived. I looked around. So let's see if I can find it. Was it there or there? I'm going to find it anyway and we'll try and find the Bright one. And I'll see if we can see any of the others which are easy to read and uh, I'll put it on camera for you. Yes, this is a shame. This one's broken up, sunken in the ground. Uh, cracked, really hard to read. We've got a Henry, I think that's a Henry. Um, B.O., don't know. Probably a February 17, 80, I guess that'll be the year they're born. 17, I don't know, it's really hard to read what that says. 
This is a family name of Janssen's, a couple of side by side here, 1855. And this one looks like 1882, uh, possibly. A Huffman, 72. That's a really good age for back in those days. Uh, really good age. 72 years, and uh, looks like it says two months. All right, some of the unreadable gravestones have actually had uh, some plaques added to them. I've just come across one here of a, a War of 1812 veteran uh, buried right here. Uh, it's very interesting. Now, here we have another war veteran of 1812. Uh, so I have to read what that says. It's in French. Upper Canada. A veteran. And the stone headstone's being held up by a couple of bricks here. This is the other side of it. But it's really hard to tell now. Is he a... Does that look like George? It's like a George. We also have a Michael Hoffman here, uh, 1763. It looks like a new one. It's just being newly done. So they found the old one and managed to uh, figure out what it says. Uh, PT, is that a private? Uh, Third Lincoln, uh, Michael Hoffman, 1835, uh, veteran of the War of 1812. We have a couple of broken ones here as well. Which is sad, really sad. This is a sad one I just come across. Uh, Looks like he died 19 years old. Young guy, very young. I wonder what happened here. A couple more sunken headstones. This one's really, really poor. Looks like he broke off at some point, fell in the ground and it stayed there ever since. Uh, family name of Scarlet. There's a few Scarlets along here. Um, War of 1812 veteran once again. Still can't remember where I saw that name of the person of color. I'm gonna get to it very shortly, I know I am. All right, I found it. I think I walked past it twice <laughs> after I seen it when I first arrived. And it caught my attention right away. Uh, this would be Russell. I believe that says... Gen... I don't know. Benjamin? Ben? Je yeah, Benjamin. Spelt slightly different. Uh, Benjamin Russell. Died 1866. So, in living memory, this will be the headstone, people of color, that is being buried here. All right, this one right here, it's hard to read, but I believe this is a bright. Um, I really can't read it very well. Let's see if I can, see if you guys can read it. I'll brighten it up. Uh, died on, blah, blah, I can see bright. Bright, it says bright right there, bright died. Bright died February 20th, no, I can't be right, 1902? I don't know, it's hard to tell. Also, say, oh, I don't know, 21, it's really hard to read this one, but this one does say bright, that's definitely bright. Now, is this place haunted? Now, I'm not the right person to be asking that question too. Uh, for one, I don't believe in ghosts. And secondly, I'm not, I'm not a religious person, but I am fascinated by things like this. Um, but like I said at the beginning of the video, I started this rabbit hole and ended up on a website called torontoghost.org. And they listed this cemetery, the Colored Cemetery, and they had it listed for a ghost sighting. The only ghost sighting they have listed is of a shadowy figure of a red coat, which is meant to appear somewhere in the center of the cemetery, which would just be round about here. So now, if, if you're familiar with the area and been here before, have you seen this particular ghost? Uh, do you believe in ghosts and stuff like that? And what do you think of this video in whole? Uh, please leave a comment below. I'd love to read uh, what you think about this video and this, in particular the ghost story of this particular area. And uh, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed being out here today and exploring this part of our history. Um, we're so used to the history which we all know about with the War of 1812 and uh, the, war, uh, the Fenian Raids. But this, to me, this, this really got my attention when I came across it online. And, and it's, it's such a small, well-kept, beautiful place. It's very tranquil, except for the tractor, which hasn't stopped mowing the grass since I've been here. Because history should be 
it should not be edited the whole I'm going, I'll say that again. In today's uh, in today's council culture, it's amazing. It's, Yeah, I don't know if someone's been doing some sacrificing things here, but uh, that's a dead animal, not buried. Not sure what it was. Doesn't smell. So anyway, dead animal, not buried. This this really got my attention when I came across it online, and and it's it's such a small, well kept, beautiful place. It's very tranquil, except for the tractor, which hasn't stopped mowing the grass since I've been here. <laughs>